Hey, what's going on? What's going on, y'all? What's going on? This is the Millionaire Essentials Podcast. What's, what's, what's up, bro? <laughs> this is the first episode, and you already got the face on. Because <laughs> you, you, you started it off wrong, bro. Okay, so go ahead. Go ahead. What's you, going you on, y'all? Off. It's Brandon Provider. This is Tevin Facey. Welcome to the Millionaire Essentials Podcast, where everything's essential. Yes, sir. And this is the fun and poppy right here. Me, fun and poppy. I know. Just, just, just keep it at that. It's the fun and pop, yeah. What's going on, Tev? What's going on? How you Brent? been, man? I'm good, man. I'm chilling. You know, it's living. A, it's, a, it's a lot going on in the world today, man. This is absolutely true, especially in the financial literacy world. Like, I, I, I don't know. As of late, these topics have been getting crazy, especially when it comes to just all these, you know, big influencers that we have nowadays. I, I think that's what you're alluding to, right? So talk about it. Talk about it. You started off, so you might as well it. get to it. Listen, listen. It's it's just a lot of a lot of things going on in this world. It's a lot of people that don't have money. It's a lot of people that need money. Um, as you know, if y'all don't know, it's the funded poppy over here. Yes, sir. I'm Brandon, and we help people get access to capital. We help fund businesses. We help people become profitable. We help build businesses. And I think the issue we're facing, or the issue we're seeing, is a lot of people out here think it's hard to get capital. Think it's hard to access money. And they're not taking the right steps to get capital. Right. And when they get it, they don't know what to do with it. Hey, I, I know a little, little, little bit of thing or two about that. You know, that, that kind of was what my journey was, right? Um, I know we get on social media every day. We talk about, hey, learn how to get funding, so on and so forth. But, like, even when, when we first got funded, right, you know, uh, me, me and my partner, Natalie, we, we got funded, like, 170000 We didn't know what to do with it. Like, we didn't know, we didn't have any mentor. We didn't have anybody tell us exactly what to do. And, um, you know, first and foremost, getting the money is easy, right? As we know, getting the money is easy, but the hard part is knowing what to do with it after or knowing what to focus on. I guess that's what, that's what we should call it, what to focus on. Well, well some people think getting the money is the hard. So why is it easy? What? Get, getting get, the money. Some, some people, well, for, for most us. people think that's the hard part. Exactly. So but tell for, me why it's easy for you. So so for us, and why we know it's easy, is because, one, we know what is the first step to getting money, right? It's obviously our personal credit. But to most people, they don't know that. They just think, you know, personal credit is just to use it, get personal cards, maybe get a house, maybe get an auto loan, and that's about it. But- Personal credit is definitely a catalyst that you can use to get business funding, business credit. Like, I, I don't know what what else. Now, now, let's. I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate. Right oh, okay, now, right? go ahead, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give the opposing opinion on that. So, you, which, which, which bar are you from on this opposing opinion? You from Brooklyn on this? Or you, you Queens? Both combination. You gonna be combination. A lot of people right. ain't gonna like that, but right, let's, cool. let's go with the combination. Let's, let's go with the combination. So look. I think the issue with people is forget personal credit, right? You right. don't need you don't need personal credit. I know a lot of y'all about to get mad at me. You don't need good credit. <laughs> I think the issue is people are not hustlers no more. That, so you that is, could that make is very a true. lot of money. I'm gonna give you a perfect example. Yeah. A lot of people use the excuse, my credit is bad. I can't get a loan. I can't get a line of credit. I can't get a business credit card. True. I don't have no money. I can't do this. True. Social media is free. You could create an IG page for free. Mm-hmm. You create a TikTok page for, for free. free. Mm-hmm. You could create Twitter for, for free. free. Got you. You can do something, get on Canva. Canva. Yep. I can create an ebook on Canva for, for free, free or damn near super low per month. Got you. Whatever you think you know, you create an ebook. Right. Now you can go on social media for free, promote your ebook, do Instagram lives, do TikTok videos, and sell your ebook every day. But how does this get back to the conversation of not having good personal credit? So now the excuse that everybody be having, I don't have personal credit. I can't do nothing. None of that takes personal credit. If you're a hustler, you can make money being in a so-called bad situation and fix your situation. So I think the first step is not fixing your credit. The first step is fixing your mindset and become a hustler and figure out how to start making some money to fix your situation. Because if you have bad credit, you get good credit, you get a $100,000 loan. You still going to mess it up. This is true. Because people don't know how to make money. This is true. Yeah. Uh, So you're being a devil's advocate. I'm kind of siding with you on the devil's advocate part, right? (laughs) I'm kind of siding with you a little bit because that is very true. People aren't hustlers nowadays. People don't want to work. I think think that's what it is. There we go. They don't want to work for it no more. There we go. And I I think 
um, with us coming from the era of like, you, you better work or you ain't going to get nothing, right? Your parents are telling you, yo, you, you got to go to work or you got to do your work in order for you to get somewhere. I think with us coming from those type of eras, it's like, yo, we, we know that we need to put that work in. We know to, that we need to put that hustle. In. I think, I think Wallow even said it, Wallow even said it in one of his videos, like, like everybody just wants everything easily now. Like it, they just feel like it's, it's so easy that they see it on social media. They see so much people doing the same things. Why can't they get it? Why can't they be able to, to afford living that type of lifestyle? Why can't they get the funding that they're looking for? Like, I don't think they really, they really want it. So people are mad at the hustlers nowadays. So when I hear people get mad at, get mad at Instagram models or get mad at these dudes that's doing funny videos every day that's getting paid, Mm -hmm. they're hustling and people are mad at them. Yo, why they get, why they making so much money? Right. Cause they're hustling. Right. And people are mad at the people that's hustling nowadays because people are used to security. People are used to going to a nine to five, barely working, and barely. go home with a guaranteed check every week. This is true. And and I hate to say it. I hate to say it. But y'all not ready for it. I'm gonna be y'all are not ready for it. I'm I'm just letting y'all know that. Entrepreneurship is not as easy as it seems. I just wanna let y'all know. Disclaimer it, listen, a nine to five is the easiest thing you could do. It, it, it's, I'm sorry, this that's the easiest thing you do. It is. And it's it's literally your best investment into getting into entrepreneurship. It literally is. That, that's 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 your first investor, your nine to five. For real. It really is. Your your first investor is your nine to five. And for me, that's that's honestly what I use to start investing into real estate or into other avenues. Like that was my first real investment. I was able to buy courses because I had a nine to five. Exactly. I was able to get a mentor because I had a nine to five. I was able to afford those things because I had a nine to five and that I was paying me every single week and me not worrying whether I had job security or not because I had a nine to five. Exactly. Like with entrepreneurship, you don't got that. <laughs> it's, you work every day until you get to the point of the security and maybe, you know, some past investments that you've possibly done or uh, maybe investing into bigger deals or things of that nature or, or sell offs or something. As entrepreneurs, as serial entrepreneurs, as business owners, you don't get that every day. And I, and I want to put that disclaimer out. It's not easy. It is not easy. I just want to let y'all know that for sure. So. So why so many people, why is there such a gap between the bottom and the top? Why, like, why is there such a gap? And why is that gap created like that? I'm going to be honest. I think you should answer that question. You asked it because I don't know the answer. I, I think. I think first of all, it's always going to be like that because that's what makes society society. Right. And the way America, the way the United States is run, it has to run off people. It has to be a one percent and it has to be a ninety nine percent. Right. It has to be a working class. Mm-hmm. There's no middle. I don't. I don't believe there's a middle class. I don't believe there ever was because the falsehood of a middle class. Right. Say you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. Let's just say six figures. Right. Mm-hmm. Most of those people is one or two checks away from being broke. That's only like sixty thousand a year after taxes, anyway. Most of those people is one. If if <laughs> if, if you could tell what situation when if you didn't go back to work for the rest of the year, how long could you live? How long could you could you could you support yourself? For most people in PTO. America, well, but what about PTO? Bro? No, you're not getting paid. Well, you're, I'm paying. You're not getting paid. Advocate in this one. What about PTO? PTO, you get paid. Exactly. Pay time so, off. But if I have a six figure job, I have PTO. So what are you talking about? Yeah, that's security. We're saying if you didn't get a check from your job for the rest of the year, how long could you survive? For most people. But then you wouldn't, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have a job. If I'm not getting a check from a job for the rest of the year, I wouldn't have a job. No, that's why I'm clarifying. There's really, there's no middle class. So it's like middle class people making six figures. They're really just a couple checks away from being poor. This is true. There is no middle class. So, so what about me? Like I got a, I got a nice corporate cushy job. I'm in the city. I, I'm I'm getting I'm taking the train so I'm saving What's on cushy, gas. Though? What's cushy? We in New York. You taking vacations every single month? We in New York, so I'm a spe- I I would specify that since we are in New York, cushy, cushy gotta be like one eighty. Cushy has to be like one hundred eighty thousand. What year. is what is that one eighty doing for you? What it like as far as your life? It don't matter what you're making. If you stop right now without a check, how long can you live? You make what you make two twenty five a year. If you stop right now without a check, how many months can you go? That determines where you're at in your life. I'd say like a month or two. 
And that's not good. And if I'm living on the same, I'm living on the same type of like ex- same expenses, lifestyle. You got to keep up the same lifestyle. Every groceries. That means you check the check. You check the check. You check the check. I, I and those are the that. same people laughing at the bums on the street. But they could easily switch places in, in two months. The pandemic hit, them same people was damn near close to them, sitting next to the bums <laughs> on the street. I ain't gonna them lie. Same people. That stimulus check ain't come out. And, them same you know, people. We would have been right there. We would have been right they there. They was begging for them stimulus checks. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, they was. But, I, but, but hold up. You gotta understand, unemployment helped us. Unemployment helped us. It helped a lot of people. Helped, helped the scammers Africa too. Here. Helped the scammers too. Look, we're not talking about the scammers. <laughs> we talking about, it helped we're the talking about them, too. them nine to five workers. <laughs> You talk about the they became the scammers. <laughs> you know what? What we gonna do is we gonna go right back to the first, the first initial okay. topic that we had, okay. which which was the 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 topic of financial literacy and what's going on now, right? With everybody that's that's out there now, you get what I'm saying? Like with with all the controversial topics that's been going on, and I know you've seen it. I, nah, I, saw, nah, nah. I, I, don't, I don't watch TV. You I got, you saw you know. hop on a live talking about it, bro. I don't want to hear nothing <laughs> that you ain't see it. You ain't. I saw you hop on a live talking about it, and and the person that we're talking about is Grant, Grant Cardone. Okay. Brandon took a forty thousand dollar program with Grant Cardone. Yeah. Talking about how he can level up his business. First of all, first that's of his all. man's. First of all, first of all, anybody that pay, that you pay forty thousand dollars to, that became your man. First of all. You this, might not have his issue. number. This is the you issue. might not have his number, this but is that is issue. definitely a man. This is the issue. This is the issue. As your homie, all of these people yeah, are a certain clean. way. I I know gotcha. that already. So you so you knew this going into the forty thousand dollar program, or you knew this going into listen talking about nothing. It. Nothing that none of those people say or do is going to surprise me because in the back of my mind, I already know the reality. But what we supposed to do is learn from them and bring it back to our community. That is what we supposed to do because I the I same. I like how you switch that around. The same with you. I know you. You be wearing designers all the time. They what think they about? think about you the same way. I got Uggs on. They think. I bet you they think about you the same way. <laughs> Look, but you are aware of too, right? Uggs is for the for the people that want their feet warm. That's what it, that's what it's about. They think they all think everybody about needs us their feet the same warm. way. Matter of fact, let's go back to the topic, right? What did he say? What did he say? He basically called us um, chipmunks in a way. He said we're simple minded. He said we're what did he say? We're simple minded. We talk in a non nuclear term terminology when we're speaking to black people under forty years, right? They talk in a non nuclear. First of all, using non nuclear is not being non nuclear to a yeah, under forty he, he, year old. He's he's a, he's a stupid genius. He's he's dumb. Yeah, we know that. So, but okay, but. This is where I understand. He's talking from, which I was offended and I disagree, but he's talking from a marketing perspective. This is true. So he's marketing to a group of people. and he. But this is where the genius comes in. He mm-hmm. knows exactly who he's marketing to, who he's targeting, and how to talk to them. This is where we're supposed to take notes and say, how do we find who our target audience is? How do we talk to them? How do we recognize them? How do we make money? Now, we don't got to be as disrespectful as he was. Well, he's straight to the point. I ain't going to say he's disrespectful. Yeah, he's, he's straight how, to how the he point. Feels is exactly. how he feels. Exactly. But we're supposed to take notes, and, and this is how we recognize our audience. Who are we speaking to? A lot of us don't know how to recognize our audience. So we have to recognize our audience and know how to sell to them and know how to speak to them. So he even saying not not normal to clash, whatever he said, right. he probably dumbed down his words just to do that. I'm, I'm going to be honest. non <laughs> that. is definitely not a dumber word than saying... But he didn't say it right. He said... He said he didn't even say it right, bro. No, he di- he did it. He did it. <laughs> but it's, we're not gonna get to that point, right? Yeah. He, he said non nuclear or something similar to that point. Yeah. And non nuclear is definitely like a SAT prep word. I'm not even gonna lie to you. That's that's speaking in the sense of like you know we're we're not uh, using hi- highly highly leveled words for people that are in that aspect of a, a, a different set of IQ. You get what I'm saying? So him saying non nuclear to who was it? Trump Trump's daughter. Uh, Trump's you know what that daughter? was? The public, his publicist put a word down and he was just like, nah, no, 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 no. That's, that was one of those? <laughs> that was one of those. That was one of those. <laughs> he had to practice that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he had, had to edit that one three times they to edit, get it right. They had to edit that one in. You're right. You're right. They definitely edited that one in, but um, they used the AI on that. That's what they did. Yeah, they used yeah. the AI they speaking. They should have. No, they did. It's not they should have. They did. You ain't know? No, I didn't. I didn't know either. But still, the point is, is that <laughs> they probably used the AI 
They threw the AI right over his voice, nod in the clay shirt, and then that was it. They threw a little southern accent to it. You know, he Grant got yeah, that yeah, little, yeah, little down little. south Louisiana. Yeah, yo, that's what you expect that's, from somebody from Louisiana. You know that's how they come on, bro. When people be so surprised at what people say, he from Louisiana. He an old guy, an old white guy from Louisiana. So if y'all think he don't be thinking a certain way, like y'all y'all silly, bro. He that's how he probably feel. About us, but he's going to make money off of us. This could be just true. take that knowledge, recognize it, and make your money. That's how I feel about the but situation. Look, I'm not, I'm not going to completely put him down, right? Because he, I'm he, not putting him down. I'm just no, being straight. I, well, I'm being straight too, but I, I'm not going to completely put I him down. Some money from him, because yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nah, <at least> <laughs> there is, there is nah, points, there is points, and there is things that he he's done or or um, business techniques, um, you know, funding, not funding, a lot, sorry, a lot methods. Of yeah, that he does that, you know, we need to start using inside of our culture, right? Absolutely. We need to start using how to buy businesses. We need to start using how to continuously um, understand whether a business is profitable, whether we want to uh, uh, raise capitals and things of that nature. Like that, that's very important for us to start doing because I think just the, the environment that we're in now, a lot of people are looking for investments, Right. And, and, th and this is just our circle, right? We're not talking about the, the masses, right? We're not talking about everybody inside the world. And in just our smaller circle, everybody is looking for investments that are going to bring them back a profit. So now how can, we, how can we in turn bring these same type of methods and strategies back to our people, back to our culture? You get what I'm saying? Like You said something, you said something earlier, right? AI, right? Yeah. We about to hit that eye roll by age. We about to hit all them, all the all the movies I, that, about Will, that, Will that. Smith was on sign. I tell you that all the movies we saw a couple just about 10, 15 years ago with the robots and all that. We right. here. We we finally here. We finally we here. here. I, I robot was right. A lot of people are scared. So a lot of people are excited. A lot of people are scared. A lot of people are scared they're going to get replaced. The working field, like I said, that middle class. It, a lot of people are scared they about to get replaced. This is very true. And be next to Joe Schmo. Right there, right there with the change cup, but a lot of people that's on the other side of the spectrum, the top percent, they excited. They you, they, yo, we can make so much money off of this. This episode is sponsored by Madison Mortgage. Listen, if you guys are struggling to find your first house, or if you're looking for your next investment property, come to Madison Mortgage, where they could qualify you guys, no matter what your situation is, to get in your first property or your next property. Come down, take a stop by the office, and get qualified for your property. Madison Mortgage. Team John at Madison Mortgage. Exactly, that's that's very true, and 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 I would say that it's it's happening now, right? Um, the reason why I say that is because I spoke to somebody um that's still you know in that working class field, mm -hmm. and um, he he's still in the working class field, but he does like Uber on the side, right? You know, obviously to make a little bit more money. And he said with him driving Uber, he was driving Uber, and he he's he's been doing a lot of um office pickups, and he said in a lot of these office pickups he he's been doing, people have been getting laid off. And it's because they've either one been either using AI technology or two using people from overseas so that, the, mm -hmm. so that these corporations can cut down their costs. But these corporations cutting down their costs, they don't need you. They ain't paying you $30 yeah, yeah. no more when they can either pay somebody overseas eight to, eight to $10 maybe, or they can use an AI that they only have to pay a certain amount of money per month. And the Absolutely. AI can do exactly everything that you were doing. Absolutely. So how can, Working class people get past that. What is working class? Yeah, we're not going to do that. What What is working? You just class, You bro? just said middle class is not a class. So now you're gonna ask me what working yeah, class? What is, is working class? Working class is is working class. You, I'm working class. You working class for yourself though. I got a W two. I'm matter of fact. I'm running. I'm, we got matter of fact. I got to collect my check this week. I'll get a W two. Well, technically, I'm not working class. I do mine ten ninety nine. Yeah, I'm. I'm, get, I'm a working class. So. Actually, yeah, you were working class. I don't even know why you on this podcast as an entrepreneur. So this is the I'm Tevin show class. now, right? <laughs> um, Millionaire Essentials by Tevin Facey at this point. Because he's still working class, but and he still got to cut his check. But but you see the difference, right? Number one, whether it's cutting the check from our company or whatever, number one, I, I have the mindset of I, I want five W-2s. I want five checks this week. I want six checks this week. I'm not waiting for I don't want just one check. Did you do one? Did you Did you do five checks this week? I could, we could split it up to five checks. <laughs> but then, <laughs> no, you going to be paying way too much taxes on that money. No, but I think the difference is, like I said, go back to that, that topic about hustlers, right? Right. 
this shouldn't be, I. Right, I'm just going to work this nine to five, go home and get a check. Like people need to start thinking of other avenues of investments. You could keep your nine to five, but have multiple streams of income. This is true. Have multiple streams of income. When you come home from your nine to five, you could still sell something online. You would have, you would get another nine to five if you really want. I don't suggest it, but start selling, making your life easier. Go, go on that computer, the, that laptop, the internet was the best thing ever invented. That is very so true. many ways to make money. And that, that's, that's what I did. To be honest, during my nine to five, um, you know, working with, with a subcontractor as, with Con Edison, I was doing funding on the side and I was making my, you know, 10, 20,000 off of that. And with doing so, like it helped me propel outside of that nine to five. You get what I'm saying? So it was easier for me to now leave that nine to five and, and work in a, a cushy job, right? 150,000. Yes, it's not as much as 180, but it was still, you know, 150,000 a year. I can pay my expenses. I can do whatever I wanted um, as far as like, cause, cause I was entrepreneurially mindset. So I was able to now use the credit cards for points. I was able to go on travel. I was, I was able to do a lot of things that a lot of these nine to five workers don't do nowadays. Um, so with doing that, like for me, it was easier to get out of that. So exactly like you said, have something that's bringing in some extra money. Exactly. So 10,000, 20,000 a month on top of whatever you're making is amazing. And for us, like doing that with funding clients, with us doing that for funding clients, that's only like one or two clients a month. And exactly. If, and if you're funding them <clears throat> above a hundred thousand a month and you're charging them 10%, that's, that's a no brainer. And if you, especially if you build those relationships, you're able to do those type of things. Like it's easy. It, I can say it again. It's a no brainer. Look, look, you, you could have five streams of income with one business. So people think multiple streams of income. I got to have five different businesses. Right. With just with millionaire essentials. Right. Yeah. Which is our business. Right. We could sell merch. Mm-hmm. These will be for sale soon. Million essentials. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We could sell merch. Grab that. We could do credit repair. Right. We could do funding. Yeah. We could run mentorships. Yeah. Ebooks, courses. Yeah. Yep. We could we could do a podcast. <laughs> what we at? Six? We have subscriptions. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> we could throw events. This is all the stuff we're actively doing and trying to or going to do. Mm-hmm. This is one business, one LLC. One. Multiple streams. Multiple streams. So people think I got to have five different. No. Find what you love to do and you can have multiple streams in what you love to do. This is true. This is true. Um, and I think, and I think that's what, um, I think that's what our culture lacks, right? Like you said, the hustling mindset. Once you get to one thing, um, and I had a conversation with somebody earlier. Once you get to one thing, focus on that one thing. Because cause if you're putting... 20% of your energy here, 20% of your energy here, 20% there, 20% there, 20% there. You're at five different, five different businesses, just like Brandon said, but you're only putting 20% of your energy. Imagine if you did one business or, or one investment, or whatever it is that it's just one, and you're putting 100% of your effort into that one. Oh, trust me, you, you will surpass the goals that you thought you had because now you're actually focusing on one thing. You're not thinking about, oh, damn, did my truck break down this week? Oh, the property, I got to fix it up. Oh, the Amazon, st- why is it not, sell- why is it down right now? Like, and, and I'm, and I'm sp- specifically stating businesses that I have. Yeah. That sounds like everything you do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, bro. yeah, that's how I think everything you do. And the reason why I'm telling y'all that is because I've come to a realization that that's what I needed to do. Right. We funded ourselves for well over 600,000. And with doing so, we went into real estate. We went into trucking. We went into Amazon. We, we now have a healthcare company, right? Um, that's, that's down in, in Georgia. Uh, check, check us out. I forgot about Mutual that. Care. Damn, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. With the, with the, the, the damn um, uh, non-medical uh, transport. So mutual care, check us out. Georgia, y'all got clients, send them over. We got you. But with, with doing all of that, I actually realized that my main purpose, my main goal, my main focus was the funding company. And once I realized that, which was a little bit too late, right? Um, and I wouldn't say it's too late because we're still making phenomenal money. But at the point of, the point of what I'm trying to say is put 100% of your effort into something. If you are going to do something, if you are going to get funding, if you are going to start a business, put 100% of your effort into that business. FOMO is definitely real. 
fear of missing out is definitely real, but don't always go into everything. And if, if I can give you any advice, if, if you're not going to take our course, if you're not going to do anything with us, if I can tell you something, we can, if I can tell you something, go ahead and just put 100% of your energy into one thing. And when you do that, trust me, you, you, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see big, big, uh, big goals from there. And stop with the excuses. Yes. You know, I, and this, I hate oh, yeah, every you, oh, people who hate have it. every excuse in the world not to do something. It's like true. now, like if something don't get done, I blame myself. Like I don't blame nobody else no more. I, it's my fault. It is what it is. He does. Like, I, I, I'll, I'll attest to that. He does. Like he people be having all the <laughs> excuses. And, oh, I might blame Tevin. Definitely, I, he I, definitely I, will. I have no problem blaming Tevin. But um, <laughs> just like I'm just why, saying, why you don't blame Natalie? Actually, hold up, we are gonna get to the root of the problem. Cause it's it's, it's why, me. why would I blame Natalie? I'm taking you. All right, the, so blame me and I blame you're her. the man in the relationship. Gotcha. I hope. <laughs> nope. I'm blaming you. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, like. I think a lot of people always want to put it on some other situation or other people or why they're not achieving something. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel you can control what you can control and whatever you can control, you can make things happen. Right. So, for example, right, if a wall gets thrown up in your way, how, how much work are you putting in to go around that wall or find another path? Sometimes a wall gets put up in people and they just stop. And say, yeah, I can't do it. Either break it down or go around it. Bro. Yeah. They say, I can't do it. Nah. And we, and we find hear that. another way. We hear that a lot. Like, you know, we, we, um, we're doing these free webinars that we had. And <laughs> if y'all, whenever this come out, y'all, y'all probably done heard the last webinar we did, but we were doing free Every webinars week for like three, f- no, what? Two, October, two months? November, three months? No, two months, like five months, bro. Well, no, it was no five months. October, November, December, January, February. It's not five, but we ain't starting October, bro. All right, four months. I, I think it's October, but let's say four, four or five months. Four months. Anyways, with us doing those free webinars, we heard so many excuses from people, and it was stuff that they can definitely break down that wall or go around it, right? Uh, you know, my credit, uh, I, got, I got a late payment on my credit. I can't get the funding or I can't go ahead for funding. Okay, get some credit repair. Oh, I, I got, I got, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, I, oh, man. I, I got utilization problems. Okay. Find a debt consolidator. Uh, I, I, I have this, I have that. Like, I, I don't want to go into all of the specific details when it comes to excuses that we've heard, but we can't think for you, bro. Yeah, we can't. I've literally sat down and gave somebody every type of situation to try and, and make a move. And it's, and it's still, I can't, if you keep using the word, I can't bro. I just, I can't do nothing for you. <laughs> no, you got talk to the camera. I, I can't do nothing for you. <laughs> now that's cool. Like I'm giving you every way, every lane, and every time I give him a suggestion, I can't. I want you to do it. I can't. I want you to do it. I can't. All right, so you don't want to do nothing then. So what are you coming up with? Because I'm thinking for you at this point. And what do you? Where's you? Where are you going to come in and meet halfway and come up with something? Yeah, I, I, I think I think that's definitely you know something that we got to get past as as a people. Um, we definitely have to get past as a people, um, you know, we just, just to keep that. just to keep that topic short. We ain't, we ain't gonna get past <laughs> that. If we keep talking about that topic, we're gonna be here for another thirty minutes, and I ain't trying to do that because I can't do that. <laughs> I tell you that <laughs> I can't. So, next topic at hand, right? And this is something that I know you don't really be on the internet, and you don't really care. So no more. I'll, I'll hit them Hollywood Hollywood unlocked over here. Bro, Holly, Hollywood unlocked over here. It's not Hollywood unlocked. You don't even know where I'm getting my sauce from right now. You got something spicy. Go ahead. It's not not that spicy. (laughs) It's not that spicy. It was something I was reading online. um, And actually, my my partner, she put me onto it. It was something about life insurance. So it was was that him and the girl were dating for a period of time. Him and the girl were dating for... (laughs) Him and the girl were dating for a period of time. And with him and the girl dating for a period of time, he took out a life insurance policy. They were dating for four years. He took out a life insurance policy and, and with him taking out that life insurance policy, he added his mom and his sister um, as the beneficiary. And this was the person that I think he proposed to. I think this was his, uh, no, it wasn't his fiance. Um, but he, he, you know, they were talking about getting to that point. So do you believe that 
if you're with somebody that's been with you for such a long period of time, right? Do you believe they should be beneficiaries on your life? I already feel like your answer. You already got yeah, your no, answer. You get up. Answer. That's cool. I know my answer on this topic regardless. So. Do you feel like they should be a beneficiary on your life insurance policy? And wait, so, 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 so for some of you that are asking, like, what is a beneficiary? Beneficiary is somebody that um, they receive all the benefits to your life insurance, your death, your, your, uh, your death uh, benefits from your life insurance policy. So let's say if you are to pass, you have a million dollar life insurance policy. If you are to pass, then the person that is the beneficiary receives that million dollar payout or whatever else is left from it if you've taken a loan. Go ahead. So... So def- definitely over the years, especially my elder age right now, mm-hmm. you know, my my mindset has changed on relationships, partners, I'm, and marriages. I'm glad. Obviously, because I'm married. I I'm glad. Kids, so I'm glad. I obviously, I've changed. Okay. So, but eighteen year old you, you you uh, saying hell now. no? Come on now. But but <laughs> everybody, this is a different where we live in. Everybody teaches on right. Um, right. Everybody believe in marriage differently. Um, I don't feel that person is obligated to put that person on. And first of all, the first, I didn't say the word obligated. I didn't say the word obligated. Right. Don't put don't put the words in my mouth. I didn't say obligated. I said, do you do you feel that person should be on the policy? Not obligated. Should, be? should be. How long have they been together? Four years. No. No. So why do you feel so? I'm just They're not married. You. So for example, right? For example. Listen. Go ahead. Are they are they engaged? No. Okay. Is, does she have a baby? Yes. Okay, okay. So that's different. You ain't say that. So, so so that's a, it's so, situational. So, that, it's so situational. that's what, so that's what's gonna help you change your answer. Maybe because there's a baby. Maybe because my thing is, you know how many deadbeat dads listen, is out there. Exactly. Hold on. You okay. could be a deadbeat, but now my thing is ensuring we're all in this to ensure the next generation. That's just my thought. Okay. So once so a you, baby you gets involved, mm-hmm. now you your your life is to ensure the success of that next generation. So you, whether you're together, if that life insurance is going to help benefit that child, it, it the 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 child, the mother's child, you don't want you don't need to have nothing to do with her, but make sure which, whatever you do is going to benefit that child's life. Because obviously, if you ain't marry her, obviously I don't know the situation, but y'all may not match. be serious, or right. y'all may not match, or you may not think this is the person for you for the rest of your life. You're gotcha. not obligated to do none of that, but do something that's going to benefit that child. Okay, so so you so with him. Having the child with that person, you believe that he should be, she should be on the beneficiary as a like. Yeah, a because child. I believe once a woman has my child, right, ensuring she's good until that child, as long as that child's with her, I have to ensure she's good because that's that's the protector of my child. But so how, I have to ensure she's. But good. how do you know that she's gonna take that life insurance? Money I will have to hope and, and be, because the child's a, and, a, a minor, so it's the mother's gonna be in charge regardless. So I have to hope she has a that I would have to hope she has the best interest. That's why you watch who you lay with. But this is where a trust can come in. So with the trust and will, well, not a will. Will, you can take the probate, and I <laughs> I don't want to do that. Actually, I got to tell my pops, you got to get out that will. But anyways, a trust is definitely important because a trust can lay out and specify and designate who we want to get to that, port, that part of, let's say the life insurance is to come, right? Let's say we got 20 million coming to that life, uh, to that trust, right? Him... Or, or me or whoever the person was, right? Let's call him, let's call the guy David. If David gets 20 million into that trust from the life insurance after he passed, he can designate that, you know, his mom can be the, the, the life estate E or the, the wealth manager for that trust to be able to now say, hey, for the next three, four, five, 10 years until our daughter becomes of age, um, you are to manage and be able to use this money to help our daughter with school, uh, any extracurricular activities or anything else that is to come. And then when our daughter reaches of age, um, that she goes to college or if she doesn't go to college, right? It's all in, in whatever he wants to write inside of his trust. And then at that point, it's like, if she wants to borrow money from this trust, she needs to write down a detailed business plan. She needs to write down um, whether whether she's going to be buying a business or whether she's going to be selling, I'm not selling, whether she's going to be buying a business or whether she's going to be starting a business from scratch or investing or something like that. I think that would be the best advice for David to do in, instead of just adding her as a beneficiary onto the life insurance. And David could have well have done that and he just never had told her. So, you know, I don't know. 
I, to me, I felt like that that cop that topic was a little bit controversy just because you never know the person that you're with until those type of conversations come up. You get what I'm saying? Life insurance, trust, those type of things. But then again, in black households, we don't really have those conversations. Mm-hmm. So how do we get to the point of having that conversation? Being on the same page with the person you're in the house with. That's number one. But not everybody's on that same page. So you shouldn't be in the house with them. I, I, couldn't, I can't say that. Why not? I can't say that. Because you can, grow, you can grow to be with a person. If that's the person that you feel like you would be with. You could, be, you could get used to being around them. That's two different things. A lot of us is it's complacent and, and used to being around people. And that's why people stay together for 10 years and don't like each other. I'm glad that I got, I got that out of you. So now with that being said, with growing to be complacent or, or growing to be with a person, do you, feel that, do you feel that as entrepreneurs with our schedule being so hectic a lot of times in a relationship, how, how, is, the, how is the woman supposed to feel, right? Obviously we're men, so I can't speak from the woman's perspective. How is a woman supposed to feel if she's a nine to five worker or if she's not, if she's one of those very old school conventional type of women that like, you know, come home, it, it can't, we eat it food can't, together. It can't stay there. Oh, no, 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 no. Keep going. Cause, cause y'all just have to have an understanding. I believe like number one, y'all got to meet in the middle somewhere. She can't have one mindset. You have one. And obviously somewhere is going to clash. Right. You can't be on the road and she's like, I'm going to work here. And it's, it's, Y'all got to come together at some point. Right. And then y'all got to come together and have an understanding. Like, definitely you got to meet halfway with her, especially if she's a family oriented. We want to eat dinner together by eight. You got to know how to do your schedule and make time to, you know, tend to her needs as well. But even as us, like, let's say, let's say there is a person like that. They want to eat dinner at eight with the family. We have webinars. We have we have group calls okay, we have to well, do at well, hold eight. On, hold like, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you know she wanted to eat dinner at eight before you made your call at eight? No, she looked good, and that's what I wanted. I'm I'm so, devil advocate at this point. She looked good. This is the person I wanted to be in my life. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm able to spend money. I'm, I want to have a family. She looks good. Hopefully, she's the right person. Hopefully. Hopefully, she's the right person. So she looks good. This is the person that I want to be with. Not sure if her brain is where I want it to be at, but she looks good and that's the person I want to be with. So how am I supposed to have that conversation with her beforehand if I'm an entrepreneur? So along the path, you want to learn who she is. And if it don't match with you. But, but you just said you're growing. If you're growing with the person or if you're becoming complacent or just there, then you're saying along the path, that means that I have to grow with that person. So. Are you contradicting yourself in a way? What are you talking about? When we just spoke. You, you, have to, you have to learn the person. You don't learn the person until you be around them long enough. But you just said you can't grow with a person to be complacent. I didn't say that, bro. What are you talking about? Am I, am I tripping? No, I did not say that. First of all, you have to be around the person and grow to learn them. Once you learn them, you could choose, yo, this is what I want and this is what I don't want. If, you, if this is what you don't want, you will find somebody else. Y'all not tied together, bro. That's, 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 and that's as simple as the world is. People think they have, they're scared to hurt people's feelings. And they, Yo, damn, I got to stick around. I got to, no. If this is not the person for you, you can leave. You're not a tree. Like, you don't have to stay here. <laughs> You're not planted here. Especially if y'all don't have no kids, especially. And this is why. So what if they got kids? This is why he, I don't she like. She looked good. Oh, hold on. She looked good. It. That's what he wanted. This is why I don't like young relationships. I don't believe in young relationships. Hold, hold on. I don't hold, believe hold in young relationships. All right, all right, all right. So, all right, so, all right, so we got some weird hair. We got some hair. So I'm a young entrepreneur. I'm a young entrepreneur. I don't think you should be tied to nobody at that point. I'm, all right, forget a young entrepreneur. I'm, I'm Brandon Jackson. At what age? 18 year old Brandon. J- Wait, I'm hold not. up, hold up. You, you worked at MTA since you was 18, right? Yeah. So you had a good job. Like most of us ain't had no good job at 18. We was making damn near 20,000 a year. You out here 60,000 a year. Man, you you the man, you the Hall of Fame. You making 60,000 a year at 18 years old cuz that's that's literally the base salary when you go into MTA, right? Yeah, around around there. So, at 18 year old, you're making a lot of money. Obviously, you going to go party, have fun, live life. But now you're getting to a point that you're 22, 24. 
You, do you still feel like that's, that's young? Yes. So what? At what point do you feel like that's not young? Like so what? What age? It's not just about just the job you have. Or maturity. It's about, it's about well, men and women mature different. That's another. This is a whole another topic. Men and women mature differently. Okay. So as a man, I think around late twenties, mid to late twenties is where I think you should start searching for a partner. Yeah, as a man, I, at a certain age, like um, just just because our hormones are who we are, like we're gonna be running around a lot and have we have to get a lot of we gonna things. be wilding. Just say yeah, it's cool. Yeah, we are gonna be yeah. wilding. We are gonna be and trying just, to get everything out there. It's exactly. it's, it's our nature. It's so true. just as like before you. And we're going to make a lot of mistakes early. Women mature a little bit faster. So I think it's important for a man, number one, to get that out of their system before you just go out here breaking people's hearts and for them to really understand themselves and establish themselves. So you're not out here being a struggling entrepreneur and trying to hold down a family or, or, or a woman and you're struggling yourself. I think it's important to be that. What does what is, what is, um, Kevin Samuels always say? That's not my man, so I don't know. That's, that man. is that's your man. That's not my man. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yes, rest in peace. Um, a superior, no, not superior man. A high value man. Okay. I think you should become a high value man first, and then search for him. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. If I didn't do that, I wasn't able to do that. I'm glad. I'm actually glad I met who I met while I was horrible. Wallen. So yeah, Wallen. Yeah, because cool. because nowadays these women only want just money and whatever fame. So I don't want to have money and meet a woman. So it's hard for these guys out here that that's, that have money. I ain't gonna they can't lie. Try, they don't know who they meeting. It really, it really. So it's a catch twenty two. It really it's a is. It really, and I, and I'm the same way because I I'm gonna be honest. You know, when I met my partner, I was I was younger. I was during that time. You know, I was, oh, I was twenty three, twenty four. So and we had our daughter when I was younger. So I I I appreciated that actually because no, I, I did too. I, and I matured a lot faster than a lot of other people. The world is totally, in that 10 years, the world Bro, is totally different. Though. Completely That's what different. The women is completely different. Yeah, we're not going to. That's why I'm saying. If we like, stay on that topic, bro, we're going to be here for another 50 <laughs> minutes. Because I tell you this, them women out there, they are wilding. They, they, we thought we was wilding back in the day, men. That's what I'm saying. That's them. That's them. That's why I'm looking at it different now. Like They want, they either want, before you can even Talk to him. You got to pay the $150 consultant fee. You got fee. cash app $1,000. It's a consultant fee. That's what it is. They <laughs> LLCs. All these businesses LLCs. My fault. Whoa. I'm sorry. All these women are LLCs. I, I didn't mean to say that, but all these women are LLCs at this point. You got to pay $150 consultant fee. After that $150 consultant fee, it's like, okay, cool. Then we can maybe have a conversation. And if if our conversation proceeds, then we can maybe go on a date. And if we go on a date, you got to take me to the top spot. STK, and, and, and Golden Wings. That's why my opinion now is if you become that high value man first, you can't say, what? I got to do what? But then that, hey, you, you but, should do that for me. But hold up. But then does it become a problem now with trying to meet high value women? Because high value women. What's wrong with that? Wait, hold up. Hold up. And, and I don't know. I think we should probably continue this on the next co- on the next podcast. But high value women are obviously looking for high value men. That's that's not an issue. Right? Yeah, w- but, women don't date down. Only men date down. Exactly, because we dumb. But at this point, there there is parts that those high value women are looking to date further up. Than yeah. What, yeah. Than, for the most part, yes. But let's say if we found a woman, we're only let's say we're only making five hundred thousand a year. That woman's making the same 500,000 a year. But because we're only making 500,000 a year, we're still not susceptible to her. We're still not the person that yeah, she, she would, sees you as she yeah. wants to marry. But yet that was for you, that was your person. Like that was they felt you felt like that was your soulmate. So how does a person how do we date in this era when it comes like I, I like I don't even know how to ask the question fully because it's, that, and I think that's what I'm leading to. That's why I said if you're finding who you are first, Whatever comes on the path comes on the path. So if if I'm if if I got my goals oriented and I'm chasing what I'm chasing already and I'm that high value person, whatever comes on my path is gonna come in my path. I don't have to search for nothing. Cause there's gonna be a thousand people wanting me already. So all you gotta do is get out there, find who which whichever one's the right one. Right. Hey man. I, I think I think this is a conversation we definitely gonna have to, you know, continue on the probably the next podcast. But listen, y'all. Um, we appreciate y'all tuning in for sure. Um, we definitely gonna go ahead and end off this podcast. But 
Follow us um, at Essentials ABC Solutions. At follow brand new provider. Yes, sir. Um, you can follow us on Instagram. You know, we're definitely going to be having more of these conversations. Yes, we teach about financial literacy. Yes, we teach about funding. Yes, we teach about all those great things. Financial literacy can get boring. I'm going to be honest. But when you have topics that, that you can speak about and you can actually have a conversation with people, that's what's important. Nowadays, a lot of people can't have conversations or if they do, they got to pay for it. So um, I appreciate y'all hopping on this podcast for sure. This is Millionaire Essentials. This is the Funding Poppy. This is Brandon Provider. Talk to y'all soon. Peace.